We're making slow cooked beef ragu today. This is an easy, delicious, and fantastic recipe. It does take a little bit of time, but that's due to the fact that we're using chuck steak. We wanna cook it down a lot longer. It's a highly worked part of the cow. That way we get the better tenderness and the better flavor. The rest of the ingredients are super simple, easy to get, cheap. And there is alcohol in this recipe, but if you can't consume that, don't worry, I've got substitutes. Also, before we get into the video, hit that like button, consider subscribing, it helps me out and helps me get seen by more people. Let's get straight into it. For the prep for this dish, there's three things we need to prepare. The first one being the onions. This right here is one brown or yellow onion that we peeled, sliced in half, and then just diced this into even sized pieces. You can make the horizontal cut or you don't have to, it's up to you, but just make sure you trim off any excess flesh from around the root and your end product should look like this. The second thing we need to prepare is the garlic. This right here is six freshly peeled cloves. Place the side of your knife with the blade facing down on top and then just push down to crush. This will activate the allicin compound, which is what gives garlic its strong flavor. Then give this a rough chop. Doesn't have to be super fine, but just make sure that there's no large chunks and it's all even size. The third and final thing we need to prepare is the steak. This right here is one kilo of beef chuck steak. You can also use short rib or brisket. Generously season it with salt as well as hitting it up with some cracked black pepper. 20 grams worth. And then just get your clean hands in there or use tongs and just mix this up until that seasoning is coating everything really well. With that quick prep out of the way, place a large high rimmed pan or pot over a medium high heat. Add in one tablespoon of olive oil, then we're going to add in the beef, doing so in batches so we don't overcrowd the pan and stew the beef instead of getting a nice sear on it. And then just sear this for about two minutes on each side just until it's beautifully golden brown and has a nice little crust on the outer edges. Then we can remove this and place it into a bowl, repeating the remaining batch. Also, if the pan gets a little bit too hot, just turn it down a little bit. Add in another one tablespoon of olive oil, then this time we're going to add in the onions, making sure you scrape them all in there not to waste any of this. Also a little bit of salt to taste, then mix this around and saute for about three to four minutes, just until these are golden and translucent. These will act as a natural deglazer, the moisture within will release and then pick up that beautiful fond that's stuck to the bottom, giving us that beautiful brown color. Once that's done, we can then add in that chopped garlic that we did before, as well as one teaspoon of chili flakes. They're completely optional, just adds a little bit of heat. Then mix and cook this just for one minute. We don't want the garlic to burn because it can ruin the whole dish. Add in 90 grams or roughly three tablespoons of concentrated tomato paste. Give it a really good mix through and cook this for two minutes. It's going to pick up all of that delicious flavor as well as release its natural oils. And this is going to create depth within our sauce. To deglaze this, I'm adding in half a cup of red wine. This right here is Pinot Noir. If you can't consume alcohol, just use beef stock instead. I am also using one crushed beef bouillon cube for increased depth and a little bit of umami flavor. But once that's in, give this a really good mix through and allow it to come to a boil. Then we're just gonna continue mixing it. Cook it for roughly two minutes, just until it turns into almost like a paste and that wine has reduced really well. Next to go in is one cup or 250 milliliters of beef or chicken stock. I do recommend using beef stock for this recipe. One can, which is 800 grams or 28 ounces of crushed tomatoes. Three dried bay leaves for a nice piney infusion. Five to six sprigs of thyme, which can also be chopped. As well as three to four sprigs of basil stems. These are completely optional, but just add a beautiful taste and flavor to the end product. As well as the beef and any resting juices. With that all in, give this a really good mix through, making sure all of those flavors can become friends. You'll notice the color is absolutely beautiful right now. It is also a good time to check and adjust any seasoning levels. You can also add sugar to this recipe if you find that your tomatoes are a little bit acidic, but I don't reckon it's needed for this type of recipe. The other key ingredient is about two teaspoons of Worcestershire sauce. This is just gonna add even more depth and a beautiful umami flavor. But with that all done, just give this another really good mix through, bring it to a boil, then give it another mix yet again. Reduce the heat to low, place on a lid, and then just say goodbye to this for about two and a half hours. Roughly 15 to 20 minutes before the beef ragu is finished cooking, we can place a large pot of water over a high heat, place a lid on to speed things up and bring it to a boil. Generously season it with salt, then add in 500 grams of a pasta of your choice. I recommend something with a long ribbon like tagliatelle or even pappardelle, but the choice is yours. Give it a good mix just to break it up a little bit and then cook it for one minute less than the packet instructions. After two and a half hours on the beef, just carefully remove the lid, being careful of any escaping steam, and give this a really good mix through. You'll notice that this is nice and thick right now, but if it is too thick for your liking, you can adjust the consistency with some more beef stock. The next thing to do is locate and remove any of those herbs and spices that we added in, which is the bay leaves, the basil, and even the thyme. And then with the beef, this will be beautifully tender right now. You can use some tongs just to break this up, just shredding it with the tongs in the pan. You can also remove it from the pan. It is a little bit difficult to do. You can use a fork, a potato masher, just do whatever's easiest for you. Once it is shredded, check and adjust the seasoning levels one last time with salt and cracked black pepper. I ended up using about 20 cracks worth. And you can also add even more sugar here if you wanted to, but I don't think this recipe needs it. 
Right about now, the pasta will be perfectly cooked. Transfer it straight from the water into the beef ragu. You can also serve it separately if you wanted to, and also bring along a little bit of that pasta water. It's completely fine. The starch within will help the sauce stick. Once it's all in, give it a really good mix through. Cook this for about one to two minutes with the pasta in there. The sauce will coat everything really well, and then we can remove it from the stovetop. Portion these out across five meal prep containers. These are 750 milliliters in size and I have a link in the description if you are interested. And make sure you top these off with any of that beef that's left over. I have also served this just in a regular bowl. I don't want to restrict these types of videos to only one type of viewer. This can be made by everyone, meal prep or not. And this recipe wouldn't be complete without some freshly grated Parmesan cheese as well as freshly picked basil. But I do recommend serving this when you are ready to eat it. What we're then left with is this beautiful beef ragu, meal prep or not, it smells and looks absolutely incredible. And just before we get into storage, this right here is the complete dish macros, including the serving weight. Let these cool down for about 10 to 15 minutes, put on the lids, chuck them in the fridge for up to four days and in the freezer for up to four months. When you're ready to reheat them, you can either do so in a microwave, just doing so in bursts, or in a pan, just adding a splash of chicken stock to get things moving around again. The only thing left to do is of course, we can then dig in. That right there is beautiful. It's packed with flavor. The meat melts in your mouth. The sauce is rich. It's a little bit umami in there and it reduces down into the perfect consistency. When you add that pasta through, it just coats everything so well. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. It helps the channel be seen by more people and helps me out more than you'd think. And consider subscribing. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.